Well, so we're in the Mishnah of Rosh Hashanah. We're in the third chapter. We're talking about shofar blowing. And the Mishnah is going to take us on a little excursus about other kinds of days when they used to blow the shofar. So we're beginning in the fourth Mishnah. On fast days, they used shofars of rams and they were curved and the mouths were covered with silver. And there were two trumpets in between them. And remember, this is the anonymous view of the Mishnah told us that on Rosh Hashanah, we used straight shofars of ibex with the mouths covered with gold. Remember, we learned at the end of the third, we learned in the third Mishnah of the third chapter, shofar shel Rosh Hashanah shel Yael, pashut, it's an ibex or it's a mountain goat, pashut, it's straight. Um, the Baal Nur actually quoting Rabbi Yudah says it's straight because you want your prayers to be straight on um, Rosh Hashanah, and the mouth is overlaid with gold. And this, we don't, by the way, we don't rule according to this voice on the Mishnah. So it's very, very interesting. So we have in the Mishnah a practice which doesn't correspond to today's practice. But let's just go with the flow. So on Rosh Hashanah, they're straight and they're gold. And on fast days, going back to our mission of the fourth chapter, the fourth Mishnah, on fast days, they're bent and they're silver. And there are two trumpets in between them. Shofar mekatzeh v'chatzotz, v'chatzotz rot, marichot, shemitzvat hayom v'chatzotz rot. There's a short blast with a shofar and there's a long blast with a trumpet because the mitzvah of the day is with trumpets. And what are we talking about here? How do we know the mitzvah of, of fast days is with trumpets? And the, the Gemara and the commentators are going to point us back to a verse in Bamidbar in Numbers about going to war. And going to war is seen as somehow an embl is emblematic of any distress, any disaster that might fall upon the public. And of course, when disaster falls upon the public, we need to fast. That's why we fast. We fast to avert disaster. And the verse in Bamidbar says, when, when, when war comes to your land, the, I'm sorry, the translation isn't good here. When war comes to your land, against the adversary that oppresses you. So we are, this, this, is a, this is a public, this is a public emergency. What do we do? You shall blow with the trumpets. And then if you blow with the trumpets, and once you blow with these trumpets, you're going to be remembered before the Lord your God and you'll be saved from your enemies. And the Mishnah is going to connect up all of these different kinds of blowings. So, we're going to blow on a fast day with shofar and with trumpets, but actually the real mitzvah on the fast day is the trumpet, because that, that's what we've got in the Pasuk. So we're going to blow with the trumpets, and they will be remembered. But in the same kind of way as we're kind of remembered on Rosh Hashanah, the, in, in, if you like, back in the subconscious of the Mishnah, there's still the idea that we're going to be remembered on Rosh Hashanah when we blow this, this blowing. Um, let's go on. Let, let's, let's keep going. Let's go on. Let's find another kind of blowing. The Mishnah goes on to say, Shaveh Hayovel the Rosh Hashanah. The Jubilee is the same as the Rosh Hashanah. So it's not just the fast day, it's the Jubilee as well. The Jubilee is the same as Rosh Hashanah, Latkia Vila Brachot, with regard to blowing and blessings. What are these blessings? Well, we're going to find out in the next chapter about the special blessings on the Musaf of Rosh Hashanah, the Malchuyot, the Zichronot, the Shofarot. Yeah, the um, kingship is one thing, but remembrance and Shofar blowing are intrinsically linked. The Mishnah, after it teaches about Shofar, is going to teach about these brachot. And somehow these brachot, they come into the Jubilee as well. They, it's quite fascinating. We don't, I mean, we, the Jubilee doesn't apply nowadays, but 
when they celebrated the Jubilee, they'd recite these brachot on Yom Kippur at Musaf on the Jubilee year. And um, Rabbi Yudah is going to come in with his opinion. Rabbi Yudah, Omer, Barosh Hashanah, so Kim B'Shel Zcharim. So Rabbi Yudah actually says, I'm sorry, I mixed him up. Rabbi Yudah says, we blow with Zcharim, which means male rams. These are going to be bent. Uva Yovalot B'Shel Ye'elim. And on Jubilees with Ibex. And we can think, if we like, about the fact that on, on, um, on Rosh Hashanah, we are... To say we're bent, we Rosh Hashanah is a day of judgment, but the Jubilee is a day of freedom. So maybe we can understand why, according to Rabbi Yudah, one is going to be bent on Rosh Hashanah and straight on the Jubilee. And of course, there's a Pasuk. Um, it's from Vayikra. And you'll know this, it's from uh, Bahara. You count seven Sabbaths of years. That means seven Shemitah years, seven ordinary sabbatical years. Sheva Pamim, seven times. You, that makes 49 years. And then, And then, and then you make a proclamation with the blast of the shofar on the 10th day of the seventh month. In other words, the Jubilee proclamation is on Yom Kippur. It's on Yom Kippur on the 50th year. It actually says, Yom HaKippurim. This is probably the only... No, this, yeah, this is on Yom Kippur. Uh, um, Yom Hakipurim on Yom Kippur to Aviru Shofar Bcholat Sechem. You're going to make a proclamation with the Shofar through all your land. So we've got the word Teruah, which is included in the description of New Year um, on the tenth day, on the first day of the seventh month. Yom Teruah Yelachem. You're going to have a day of blowing, and we got the day of sh- we've got the shofar as well. The word shofar is connected to the word Teruah, and this is actually how the rabbis learn that we we blow with a shofar at all on Rosh Hashanah. They learn it out. They learn it out from the verse for Jubilee year. So. It's quite fun, this, this idea in the Mishnah, Shaveh HaYovel, the Rosh Hashanah, that's Kya Vila Brachot. The Jubilee is the same as the Rosh Hashanah with regard to blowing and blessings. This is really quite fundamental because we know that you blow with a Shofar on the Jubilee. We don't really know what you blow with on Rosh Hashanah, but the Mishnah is going to say, oh yeah, okay, we're going to learn one out from the other. We're going to learn the practice on Rosh Hashanah from the practice on the Jubilee year. Let's keep, let's just keep going a little bit. We learned the Rambam, who we learned him yesterday, who said, look, the um, the Mishnah says that the Shofar of Rosh Hashanah is an Ibex, that is a Ya'el, but that's not the Halakha, and the Halakha is not according to Rabbi Yudah. Remember, Rabbi Yudah wanted a bent Shofar on Rosh Hashanah and a straight one on the Yovel, on the Jubilee. And the Rambam is going to say, no, 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 no. The Jubilee and the Rosh Hashanah are identical, just as in the Mishnah we just learned. Psak halacha she shofar shel yovel ve she Rosh Hashanah shel zcharim kfufim. And so they're identical. And so the shofar of the Jubilee and the shofar of Rosh Hashanah are both of zcharim kfufim, which refers to essentially males, but a male ram. And... Um, we mentioned I, the Akedah of Isaac, I think, yes, and I found the um, Gemara for you today. Amar Rabbi Abahu, we're in page 16 of Rosh Hashanah, um, 16a. Amar Rabbi Abahu, lama tokim b'shofar shel ayah. Why do we blow with a horn of a ram? Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, tiku lefanai b'shofar shel ayah, kadei she'eskor lachem akedat Yitzchak ben Avraham. Blow with a ram's horn in order that I will remember you for you, the binding of Isaac, son of Abraham. Do you remember that the isle, um, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw isle, an, an isle, uh, a ram caught in the thicket. And he offered that up in place of Isaac. 
So the Gemara goes on to say, And I will consider it as if you bound yourselves before me, which is actually one up on the Arcadia because Isaac was bound by his father, but he said, God says, I'll consider it as if you bound yourselves before me. We're almost out of time, but let's just look at the shofar itself. A shofar, oh, and this is going to be the only Mishnah actually about the shofar itself. And it shows us by the way, there is something instrumental about it. Shofar shenistak vedibkor pasol, a shofar which split and he then stuck together is not valid. The Gemara explains that this is not one that essentially lost its end. Because as long as there's about, uh, there only needs, I think, to be a couple of tfachim on a shofar for it to be valid. So you don't need a very long shofar for it to be valid. If, you know, if it lost the end, it's fine. But if it's split down the middle, if it stopped being a shofar completely, and then you stuck it together, it's not valid. Similarly, debake shivrei shofarot, Pasol. If you took various bits of shofar, which themselves were not shofar, and you stuck them together, pasol. It's it's not valid. If there's a hole in it, that's different. If there was a hole and he closed it up, okay, if it interferes with the blowing, it's not valid. In other words, if it doesn't interfere with the blowing, it's kasher. There's nothing in principle wrong about making a hole in your shofar and repairing it. But you have to start off with a real shofar. If you're starting off with something that wasn't basically a shofar, it was split or it was multiple shofarot, it, it doesn't work. So th there does seem to be something, if you like, intrinsic or instrumental about the shofar. We need not just to hear it, but we need to hear it from a real instrument. Okay.